Unleash next level Fortnite experiences with the newly added tools and devices in Unreal Editor for Fortnite. Fortnite Island and Experience Creators, get ready to revolutionize your island designs with a deep dive into UEF and its latest features. In this episode, we'll teach you how to use and master the powerful brand new fixed angle and fixed point cameras, the new camera third person controls, and the new map controller. These new features unlock a world of creative possibilities, allowing you to craft innovative gameplay mechanics, side-scrolling platformers, top-down roguelikes, farm simulators, and much, much more. To showcase their potential, we've meticulously recreated the iconic opening level of Metal Gear Solid 1 using only in-game Fortnite assets. Brace yourself for a nostalgia trip as you witness the iconic cargo dock level through a whole new lens. To see the full playthrough, check out the video in the link below. Or play it yourself using the map code below and see if you can escape the cargo dock without getting spotted. To access the new devices, go to the content browser and within the Fortnite folder, go to devices and open the new early access folder. In this folder, you'll find the fixed point camera device, the fixed angle camera device, and the third person controls device. We'll start by adding the fixed angle camera device to our scene. Unlike the fixed point camera device, the fixed angle camera device doesn't need to be placed at any particular point or area and will automatically attach to the player. Fixed angle cameras move with the player, remaining in a locked angle and giving them a consistent perspective. They can offer various viewpoints, such as top-down, side-scrolling, or isometric angles, giving players a consistent visual reference as they navigate through the game. You can use a single or multiple fixed angle cameras that can then be enabled and disabled throughout your game or level. Configure this device with the following options. Priority determines which device takes priority when multiple devices are active. When placing a device, the default priority is zero, which is the lowest priority assignment. Any device with a higher priority number, one and above, will override devices with a lower priority. Add to player start refers to viewing from the camera at the start of a level or adding it to the player through their interaction with devices. Enable during phase determines when the camera device should initially trigger. Let's start by setting our field of view and our camera distance. The field of view or FOV determines how much or little the camera can see at a given angle or distance. That said, setting your FOV too high can result in distorting your images. While a low FOV can result in a camera that the player can't see things or enemies around them. Distance determines how far back the camera is from the player. While angle pitch rotates your camera up or down and angle you or rotates your camera left or right. The fixed angle camera view normally centers on its target. So the offset is how far from the center the camera view is. The camera can have an offset amount on the X, Y or Z axis and on more than one axis at a time. While fixed angle cameras can dynamically move or hide objects obscuring the player from the camera, when determining your camera's distance, angle pitch, and angle U, it's still important to take into account the room or area's ceiling or roof height, as well as different obstacles or areas in your level that may appear higher or lower than the camera, but within the camera's view. Horizontal and vertical speed refer to the speed the camera will move horizontally or vertically to frame the player. When you're using multiple camera devices, a transition controls the image change as you move from one camera view to another. There are four different transition types. Linear, in which the camera view shifts cleanly from one camera to the next, at a constant pace between frames. Ease in, which makes the transition start slowly then gain speed. Ease out, which slows down the transition before it stops. And lastly, ease in out, which slows down the start of the transition, then speeds it up. Transition in and out priority determines how the camera behaves when activated or deactivated, while transition in and out time determines the time and seconds to transition from or to the camera's perspective. The bone collision properties determine the behavior of that camera when an object in the scene gets between the camera and its target. The bone collision type are instant, which pulls the camera in instantly when line of sight from the camera to player is broken. Predictive, which pulls the camera in over time when line of sight from the camera to player is broken. And transparency, which makes objects that obscure the target invisible when line of sight is broken. Collision in and out time determines how fast or slow the camera in and out when using predictive collision. 
Collision transparency determines how transparent or opaque objects are when line of sight from the camera to the player is broken, with zero being completely transparent and one being completely opaque. And lastly, collision cutout size determines how large an area the render affects. The boundaries are predefined points beyond which the camera will not move. This setting is ideal for side-scroller games, where boundaries are often placed at the edges of the screen. When the player reaches these zones, the camera doesn't move further until the player advances. Once a player moves beyond a certain point, the camera's boundary might restrict them from returning, focusing on the forward movement through the level design. Dead zone refers to an established area within which the player character can move around without affecting the camera. When the player moves to an edge of the dead zone, the camera will move to follow the target. Functions refer to all the actions that we can trigger through other devices in your level. For example, in our Metal Gear example game, we use the functions to disable the fixed angle camera and the third person controller in certain areas the player will need to explore. Though it isn't something we use in the final version of this project, let's talk about the fixed point camera device. The fixed point cameras maintain a predetermined location and angle throughout gameplay or in specific areas. These cameras adjust dynamically to player actions, but can also remain completely still, capturing a specific view of the game environment. You can use multiple fixed point cameras positioned strategically throughout the level in any game, creating a similar effect used in early PS1 and 2 horror games such as Resident Evil, Dino Crisis, Alone in the Dark, and many others. Unlike the fixed angle camera, the fixed point camera needs to be placed in a specific location where you want the player's view to focus on a specific object, character, or area. You can use the device options to specify if the camera stays still, or if it can rotate up and down, or turn left and right, in order to keep a target in frame. Many of the device options are the same as the fixed angle camera, and the same rules apply. However, the fixed point camera does have a set of unique options when look at target is enabled. Look at target determines whether the camera adjusts its pitch or yaw to frame the target player. Look at offset distance positions the camera view forward or backward from the look at target instead of centered. Look at offset horizontal and vertical position the camera view left or right and upward or downward from the look at target. Pitch and yaw acceleration determines the speed at which the camera moves leftward or rightward and upward or downward respectively in order to frame the target. Pitch and U max speed controls the max speed in which the camera moves along the U and or pitch. Clamp, if enabled, limits for how far the camera can move in the pitch and U. Clamp min and max values determine the minimum and maximum distance the camera can rotate downward, upwards, leftwards, and rightwards the target. Dead zone, when dead zone is enabled, it establishes an area within which the target can move without affecting the camera. When the target reaches the edge of the dead zone, the camera will move to follow the target. Now that we have our camera set, let's talk about the new camera third-person controller. Simply putting down a camera device in your level will result in your player character always facing the same direction as the camera. The third-person control device attempts to capture player intent, allowing your character to move any direction and face targets. Depending on the type of game you're looking to make, you may need to calibrate the targeting logic to achieve the desired player experience. The best way to determine what feels right for your island is by simply playtesting it and having others playtest to get their feedback. The controller shares many of the general setting with the fixed angle camera device, with the only addition being interact distance. Interact distance represents the distance a player must be from something to interact with it. Many of the locomotion settings are fairly direct and straightforward, such as movement speed, rotation rate, rotate towards target, and so on. However, there are a few that are a bit more ambiguous, such as rotate toward target. When rotate toward target is enabled, the player automatically turns to face their target. Shooting locomotion movement speed refers to the movement speed while shooting in meters per second. Shooting locomotion rotation rate is the player's turning rate while shooting in degrees per second. Aiming locomotion movement speed determines the movement speed while aiming in meters per second. Scale weight by distance. This value sets the scale of a target's priority weight, reducing that priority based on the distance the target is from the player. If this is set to off, distance to target does not affect target prioritization. Scale weight by angle. 
This setting affects the prioritization of targets. As targets get closer to you, aiming at it becomes prioritized. Range targeting, if enabled, allows you to set specific parameters related to range targeting assistance for players. Range targeting distance determines the maximum distance targets can be from the player to be considered valid targets. Range targeting angle, depending on where the player is facing, the range in degrees where targets are considered valid. Aim targeting, if enabled, allow you to set specific parameters related to aim targeting assistance for players when they are using aim down sights. Aim targeting distance, this value determines the distance targets must be from the player to be considered valid targets. Aim targeting angle, is the range in degrees where targets are considered valid, depending on where the player is facing. Aim targeting requires line of sight. This setting determines whether a clear line of sight is required for a target to be considered valid. With our camera and controller now set up, let's add another new device, the map controller. The map controller device gives you the ability to customize the map and mini map on your island. You can use the device's phone to determine what area of the map or mini map displays. You can determine the zoom level and framing for each map. And you can even have multiple map controller devices on your island at one time. For example, in our Metal Gear example game, despite the player being in a fully enclosed area with a roof, we use the map controller device to only show the inside of the cargo dock, as well as controlling how much of the map the player can see at any given time. The unique device options for the map controller are Map capture box size, you'll use this to define the size of the area displayed by the map. Map capture box height, determines the height of the map capture volume. Activate automatically and activate on trigger, which determines whether this map will apply to players automatically or if the map is triggered when the players enter the map capture area. Map priority, when using multiple map controller devices, this option sets the priority for each specific device. When multiple map controllers are active, the one with the highest priority value is used. Full frame mini map. If this is enabled, the entire map shows in the mini map panel. Mini map zoom factor. If full frame mini map is disabled, this determines how zoomed in the mini map is. The larger the number, the higher the zoom level. With the new fixed angle cameras, fixed angle point cameras, third person controls, and map controller at your fingertips. The possibilities for creating immersive and engaging Fortnite experiences are endless. But we're not stopping here. In our next series of episodes, we'll be deconstructing the complete Metal Gear Fortnite project, diving deep into all the techniques that brought it to life. We'll explore how to use devices such as conditional buttons, lock devices, player markers, the cinematic sequencer, and how to use trigger volumes to automate actions create complex interactions, and build truly dynamic experiences. We'll also explore how to populate your islands or specific areas with intelligent AI guards that patrol specific routes or stay in a set location, alert or don't alert fellow guards, show or hide their awareness, and much more, adding an additional layer of challenge and interaction to your levels. We'll unlock the secrets of post-processing effects to craft unique atmospheres and moods, enhancing the emotional impact of your levels and go over powerful techniques for transforming familiar Fortnite assets within the editor into something entirely new, pushing the boundaries of your creativity. But wait, there's more. Our dedication to your creative journey extends far beyond one project. We'll continue to share valuable tips, techniques, and secrets catering to new, intermediate, and advanced UEFN users. So whether it's your first foray into Unreal Editor for Fortnite, or you've been honing your skills for months, We'll help you unlock the full potential of UEFN and become the master creator you were meant to be. So hit that subscribe button and get ready to unlock the full potential of Unreal Editor for Fortnite and embark on your journey to becoming a master creator. And always remember, don't just play, create.